Well, this is the spiny headed Matt Rush. As you can see, that's why it gets its name. And these have marvellous strap like leaves, which Aboriginal women use predominantly to make baskets with. What we're going to do is strip down these leaves and we're going to strip them in half, let them dry and we're going to create cordage from those. Apart from being a source of cordage, this is also another good bush tucker. And to get the bush tucker what we need to do, we find one of the central leaf fronds, it's a clump, and what we do, we grasp firmly in the centre and we pull up. And what we end up with is this section here. I'm going to peel off some of the outside sections. Now, depending on where the plant's growing, will determine um, what water content is in these. Sometimes if you get uh, mat rush growing in a sandy, dry environment, you'll find it's not so succulent, it's a bit drier. But these are all in, a, in an area where there's quite a bit of water, so they're actually quite nice and succulent. And all I'm doing is just peeling back some of those. And the edible part is this section here. And it tastes like raw peas. And it's a good carbohydrate source. We can either eat it raw or we can cut sections of this and boil it up and stick it in a stew. But it tastes quite nice. Quite nice and crunchy. And it tastes exactly like raw peas. As soon as it starts getting chewy, it means we're done. So you have to peel off the outer sections until you get that nice soft centre. It's good actually. Harvest quite a few now, they're everywhere. There's no shortage of these at all. So you can actually cut quite a bit of that off and you can make quite a good vegetable content to your meals. So I'm going to go ahead and, and collect a few of these leaves. So once again, we can use it for cordage and we can have a feed at the same time. Here are our leaf fronds we cut from the spiny headed mat rush. Before we can go ahead and make cordage out of these, we need to split them first. And what Aboriginal women would do, they would split them right down the midrib so they got two equal halves. They would then be left to dry for two days and then they would be reconstituted with water or used as they are and then they would be made into cordage after that. So that's what we're going to do now. We're going to split them in half and then leave them to dry for a couple of days. What we're after is the flat ones. Generally speaking because we can see that they're nice and even because we want these as even as possible. The more even and uniform in shape they are, the um, the more neat and the tighter our twists are going to be when we make cordage. So in order to split them, what I do is I get my knife, I start the nick, I'm putting it right down the centre. We can just split these by hand, but to get it more, I find I get a more accurate split if I use my knife. I place the knife in the wood and I drag the frond along then I get that the exact thickness that I like. Two even halves, tapering at each end, which is going to really help with our cordage making. Occasionally you'll get one that doesn't split the way you want it, but there's many, many of them, so there's no problem. If you can get two to, to line up together, even better do two at once. Generally the thinner leaves will make better cordage, they'll dry beautifully. And of course it's all depending on what size cordage you want to make. Now you'll find at the ends, it's going to be stiff. So we want to get rid of that stiff part, that was the part we were eating before. We want to get rid of that, we want to get use, when they stop being as pliable, that's where we're going to uh, cut them off. So they're quite stiff there, so we're going to get rid of that section. And you'll find as they dry, 
you're also you're going to be left with a stiff part so one if you feel any stiffness like that just simply um, cut those parts off the whole thing needs to be nice soft and pliable so I'm going to go ahead and finish splitting these and then and then I'm going to set them aside to dry for a couple of days now when it comes time to make cordage from the Lamandra longifolia or mat rush they're exactly the same methods of where, as we've used with the cabbage tree palm the only difference is the texture is different in the, using the rolling method it's exactly the same we twist in the center these can be quite wiry at the ends when you're using the um, mat rush so you've got to cut off the stiff bit you don't want that to be too stiff it needs to be pliable so once again about two days is good drying if it dries to um, any longer than that you find it gets a bit stiff these are a little bit stiff on the stiff side to be fair and as before I roll the mat rush I twist it offset it so that it's not they're not the same length stick it on the thigh clamp and roll now these what roll beautifully and this one's quite quick really nice even twists as you can see that's very even very smooth To splice that in I do exactly as I did before trying to keep a very even twist the either more even and neater it looks the better that means it's going to be good cordage as well remember we don't want one strand to wrap around the other okay now it's time to work in my new strand exactly the same as what we did before a little bit of time on this one it's unraveled a bit What I'm going to do, I'm going to take uh, this strand, add it in here, and like the uh, cabbage tree palm fibre, I'm going to go revert back to the uh, two ply twist just to help that join together because these are so smooth, it's it's quite difficult to get two to roll together this one's getting a little bit short as well so a couple more twists and I'll add a new strand in there as well okay so I'll get another little strand there we go put that alongside there and I'll twist those two together
obviously the more offset you have your ends the stronger your cord will be depends on the length that you have as soon as I'm through these twists I'll then revert back to the rolling method now when think fiber from stinging nettles is another great source of cordage you don't have to revert back you can just you can add in the strands if it's a nice light fiber you can just add in the strands rolling it on your leg it just depends on the texture of the fiber you, you're using I find the smoother it is such as this matte brush it's harder to um, get it to roll when you're doing your join okay so now I can revert back to my roll clamp it on the leg roll away from myself and let go and there we go and then we carry on as before much quicker And once you reach the end, if you want it that longer, you just carry on as before. Keep on splicing in for as long as you need. Once I have reached an end, I'll just grab it, those two together and I'll tie it knotted off. So then it can't untwist. And there we have some cordage made out of some matte rush. A great way to tie two bits of natural cordage together is to use a sheet band because they don't put any stress on the cordage like a knot will. It's more like a clove hitch. I'm going to do another episode on knots specifically and on some uh, knots that we can use for nat um, natural cordage and specifically how to tie them. So that's just a sheet band. But it doesn't put too much strain on the cordage itself. And now I've joined those together. And obviously I can tidy those up and cut those to length. The sheet bend. I'll just roll that up. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this episode on how to make natural cordage using the cabbage tree palm and the spiny headed mat rush. My name's Gordon Dedman and I look forward to seeing you again on another episode of Bushcraft Survival.